Good morning. Well, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm really tired of really working hard on this. Um, I mean, it's a pleasure, but it does wear you out because I put so much of myself into it. And there's something extraordinary going on with it as well. Um, how can I describe this? It's uh, You can look through my entire career and there have been these moments often albums in a row um, and uh, a couple of years or something where it's a bit like um, hitting gold. Um, whilst you, my music would always hit a certain standard, there's, every now and then it's like I knock one out of the park. <laughs> it's a bit like something... Uh, it's, it's hard to describe. The right circumstances come along, the, the right influences, the right equipment the right part of your life, whatever it is, um, it all comes together in a moment where you just seem to be more inspired, more creative, and extraordinary things are taking place, and you, ex you, you one discovers new things. And it's happening on this album, and I already know that the albums that follow this will um, benefit from this for a while, for as long as it lasts. So I'm very much in, an, uh, in a, a new seam of gold and inspired time. Um, I can just feel it. It's just it's extraordinary. It's just, it's just wow. Where did that come from? I'm when I'm surprised myself and impressed myself because I'm my own worst critic, um, which is the driving force. You know, that's what keeps me going. I'm, I, you know, I'm never satisfied. <laughs> um, uh, but this one, I know how it's just. I'm going, I'm, I'm impressing myself, which doesn't sound modest at all, does it? But it's like, it's like I'm an outsider listening to myself, if that makes sense. Probably not. Um, but it's like being an observer of myself. <laughs> if you can get your head around that one. It's like I'm a fan listening to Medwin Goodall. I'm going, ooh, that's really good what made him do that whilst I'm actually doing it, which is weird. Okay, before I get locked up, <laughs> I was going to um, try and explain something that I mentioned on Facebook recently, which has got a lot of you intrigued. I've made a huge discovery on this album, which I think is part of this uh, mood of, of everything going so well. Um, and to explain it, I tried to explain this to Wendy, my wife, and her eyes glazed over, and I completely lost her, and she's giving me this look of, okay, <laughs> keep taking the tablets, you'll be all right. <laughs> uh, my career started uh, on tape. I was um, of an age where I, I uh, started just caught the end of tape and young enough to see technology kick in so I've like got an old school background with a um, um, integrated into new technology which I think has served me extraordinarily well because and I'll try to explain this as easily as I can tape if you imagine tape well tape is just tape it's just a machine it's just recording that you can do absolutely no editing, no cheating, no technology whatsoever. It's like the, you know, if you imagine the Beatles going into the Abbey Road in the early days, it was just like that. It's just a little more modern version of it. That um, it was a multi track, multi, can I just get my teeth in? Multi track recorder. <clears throat> so all you could do is learn how to compose properly, learn how to play properly, and just keep playing and rehearsing until you got it right. And that really taught you how to be a musician, and it, it it served as a great discipline. And you really had to fly by the seat of your pants, because you just couldn't do... There was no tools, no editing, nothing. Absolutely nothing. And that's how the very first Medicine Woman was recorded, and, and those very early albums. They're all basically live. Um, you know, you go into the room, uh, switch on the tape machine and uh, you'd record an instrument and, and you'd do it until you got it right or as right as you could get it now if you think on those terms 
Because it's all basically live. And it's on tape. And that's how Medicine One was uh, recorded. The way I used to um, get around certain problems was I couldn't just strum a guitar and then put everything else on top. Because if I strummed out of time or went out of time just a little bit, then everything else that followed would be out of time. I needed something like a foundation stone that would be locked in place that I could then record everything else on top of to keep me in time, to keep all the other instruments in time. It was one of the uh, disciplines of tape and the drawbacks of recording on tape. So when I was doing things like Great Spirit and um, Medicine Woman Warm and so on, the way I got round that was to record the drums first. And I used to record the drums in a way that I was almost composing the drums. So I wouldn't just go dum ch dum dum ch dum dum ch like you'd expect a drummer or a, a modern drum machine. I would instead I would play around with bongos and um, anything to hand. I I can remember on uh, Medicine Woman One the very first track invocation what you think is a bass drum is actually me with a drumstick hitting a bedroom stool at Wendy, <laughs> Wendy as I pinched it from her makeup table and I was thumping the, the, a bedroom makeup stool <laughs> that's the opening <laughs> drum on invocation <clears throat> you just had to be creative and inventive you know just do what you could in the, any way you can and uh, it wasn't it was pretty good foundation good learning curve um so I would record drums first and I would compose. I would create a rhythm that was interesting. Um, I would create beats and rhythms and because it wasn't a drum kit, uh, there'd be all kinds of different drums in there and percussion and um, it would create a mini composition of its own that would have a feel to it and uh, the accents of the beats uh, would all be in there. It wouldn't just be dum chicka dum chicka dum. It would be doing all kinds of interesting things. And so it would be a little song in itself. And once I'd done that, I'd commit that to tape. And once that was on tape, I would then... This is where I lost Wendy. <laughs> okay, I just hold on to keep that thought. Don't let me lose you here. Okay, so I've recorded the drums and it's in a particular rhythm and a, and a beat. I would then start to write the music to that. So there's my drum beat blueprint and I would compose and play the music to it. Now just let that sink in a minute. Okay, right, let's rush forwards in time. Stay with me. <laughs> if we go rush forwards in time, if you're recording on a computer, which is how everybody records now, you get a metronomic, um, a metrome. You get a, a what's called the click beat. I'm sure you've probably heard that mentioned. Um, and it's the click track. And it just goes, ding, 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 you know, and that's it. It will go in whatever tempo, Three, four, 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 whatever speed you like. Think, 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 little electronic blip. And that is what you compose to and record to. And because of the t today's technology, I can record all the keyboards and all the guitars without any drums whatsoever, because everything's locked in, going think, 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 like a road, just going down the road. And I would write and record to that. And then at the end, I would think, OK, I need a bit of drums here. And I would put the drums on last or in the middle somewhere. The drums are almost incidental, if you like. They're just giving a bit of a beat. That's how it's been happening for the last decade, say, 15 years, maybe. So, OK, now go backwards in time. That is the complete opposite of how I started. On tape, I was composing the drums, and then I would compose to the drums and move forwards from there. Whereas you flash, if you could go forwards to now, I'm sh probably describing this really badly. Whereas today's technology, the drums are almost incidental. 
I'm not writing to them. I'm not composing the drums. I'm not composing to the drums. It's the complete opposite. Now, in the past, if I was writing to the mu writing music to the drums, what I got, if you can see my fingers, is you would, the music did that. Because you were composing to the drums, you uh, I've discovered this. And I thought, oh my God, to quote friends. It's, oh God, this is so tricky. <laughs> if I'm playing a keyboard or a guitar and the drums are going, um, check, check, um, check, check. Oh no, don't laugh at me. Just bear with me. <laughs> then I would play the keyboard to the keyboard and the guitar was going, um, check, check, um, check, check around the chords and it made the whole thing just slot together like a like a jigsaw puzzle like a glove it just became very locked together the music was very very deliberately written to the rhythm and because the music and the rhythm were just now so entwined written together it gave the whole music a certain vibe and a certain feel to it that you don't get if you record it like today you record and compose all your music to the click beat the deep 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 and what i found on medicine woman six is i had this bright idea i thought wouldn't it be fun if i just go back and record medicine woman like i used to record medicine woman as if the computer was a tape machine that's just for a, a giggle and, and just to keep life interesting um i'll compose the drums first i'll do the drums first and i didn't think anything about it i thought okay it's just just you know it's just keeping life interesting i'm doing the boring same old thing later um i'll record the drums first that forced me to make the drums really interesting was interesting uh, give them a nice feel and and beat and rhythm and energy to them um because i was just focusing on the drums on their own uh, and i made them interesting and i recorded eight different drum pieces eight compositions i then started to compose the music to each rhythm and by composing and playing around on the keyboard which you've seen me do to those rhythms it made me play in a certain way that fitted the rhythm perfectly and I, I started to play completely differently and that had this knock-on effect of everything started to spiral on from there the drums dictated how I played and composed how I played and composed had a completely different feel to it and it left these spaces in the chord work and the rhythm because the everything was playing together in a much tighter way more interesting creative way it left these these spaces and nuances where i could play these little riffs and arpeggios um which then again spiraled off making everything sound like 1992 the way uh, and that period of time where that's why I used to record because it was the only way I could <clears throat> and I had no idea of the effect that ha of the overall effect on my music that that had hello and welcome back okay what I'm going to try and do is um, give you a musical uh, visual impression of what I've been trying to talk about okay um, let's see if the microphone picks this up hopefully you can hear that on the microphone dum 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 click dum dum that's what's called a click track every single studio has that what most pop groups well, well every, just everybody on that's recording in a studio will use a click track I should think um so that locks everything into time so you don't need to have drums first so what i would be doing 
<coughs> is if that is the time signature and the tempo that I wanted, I would then uh, be having a period of writing music and I'd do something. I'm just going to just knock about here and just i play something like this. Just let's keep it simple. Um, and maybe I would compose this. Three, four. Okay, so by complete comparison, uh, we're now looking at the main monitor of the studio. Let me show you what it's like if I compose by starting with the drums first. <laughs> I know it sounds, I know it sounds silly, but just bear with me. Okay, so I will now play a rhythm I've already made. So I started off here with a simple beat on a frame drum. So I'm just get used to that. And then I added a, a side stick. So I'm composing the drums as I would compose a chord work or melody. It's a it's an interesting pattern that I'm creating. And then you add a shaker and uh, a bass drum. Okay, so you've got this this groove, this pattern. And if you listen to it over and over, the, you absorb this pattern in your mind. And it has a definite feel to it and a definite pattern of accents, drum accents. It's not just going click, 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 like a click track would. Robotic. It's got a pattern, it's got an energy to it. And it's got a di di dom ka, da da dom ka, da da dom, is the kind of pattern I just did. So you start to compose to that da da dom ka, da da da, and you play in a completely different way. So that you would play, um, well, like this. So with a really good groove going on, I'm now playing the keyboard, composing something that is fitting the rhythm, the accents of the rhythm. So it's making me play differently to fit that rhythm. And by doing that, it spirals off so that what I can do next is, is because the rhythm and the chords are playing differently, it leaves this space for these hook lines like this. And the whole thing just starts to happen in a different way. <laughs> more integrated and it's catchier. Um, welcome back. Okay, um, hopefully that'll have, you'll have grasped some of that. <laughs> some of my inane wafflings trying to explain it. I don't think in the end really it can be explained. It's it's very internal. It's very much my personal creative process that I'm talking about. Um, 
it, to, to, to really condense it into a nutshell, I've discovered that if um, over the time and technology has changed, instruments have changed, ways of working have changed, and I've had to adapt to that naturally. Um, it has had a um, an influence of making me write and play in a different way, um, writing to them the metronome, the uh, the click tracks. And I've discovered that if I go back to the old school way of doing things, that if I recorded and created a drum track first, I created the drum track in an interesting, creative way. And that had an influence on the way I played and, the, and therefore the way I composed to the track. And that in turn spirals off, that I then find that I'm writing hook lines and the pitch is differently. And therefore, in the end, there's a different space for the melody and the secondary melodies and so on. And so the whole thing has a completely different feel and energy to it, simply because of that one thing of doing the drums first. And I had absolutely no idea of quite the impact that that had on my music uh, going back in time. The music I'm doing right now sounds so close to how I sounded in the sort of like 95, but matured, of course, because I'm in a different place. I'm older. The studio, I'm older. The, the, <laughs> the studio uh, is um, a technolog technically advanced. Uh, the sound quality is better. I can compose. Personally, I feel I can compose a lot, lot stronger and better and uh, in so many ways now because of all the previous experiences of everything else I've done. But putting that old school technique into today, I'm getting a, a kind of compositional and energetic feel that it sounds more like the past, put into the a present studio with better writing and better technology and better musicianship and so on. So it's like the best of both worlds, really. I think that's what I'm trying to say. And um, it's wonderful to have discovered that. It's really inspired me. And I can see that influence playing from for many albums now. Now I've discovered it, it's like, oh. It's like one of those moments in Friends. Oh my God. <laughs> um, so I'll play a little bit of um, a new track that's just about finished, not too much just enough to keep wet the appetite and i'll let that um play out on screen and i'll see you next time bye for now uh -oh. 